All right, so for today, we're going to be looking at special parallelograms. Special parallelograms are basically rectangles and rhombus. Now we can also include a squared, All right? A squared is a rectangle in a rhombus. So let's take a look at rectangles, the ideas of rectangles. So let me just write rectangles here. We know how the rectangles look like, but today, so let me draw a rectangle here. Today, we're going to be looking at art diagonals. Now, what are diagonals? The diagonals are the segments that go in the center. Interesting part of my diagonals is that they, they cross. They cross, and then uh, the angles on each corner of my rectangles, we know they're 90. Now, interesting part of the diagonals, they cut each other in half. And as a matter of fact, the two diagonals are the same length. So, Looking at the length, let's just say this side is five, this side is five, this side is five, this side is five. So that's the interesting part. Now, two angles, like let's say here in the center, let's say this angle, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna call this angle right here at 100. We know that the two angles, this angle right here is gonna be 80. They, we know they have to add up to 180. Because when you look at those two angles combined, it's the angle of a line. We know that's 180. Now, interesting part of my rectangle, let me just focus on a triangle made here. I'm just going to look at a triangle here. My triangles are isosceles. OK, what do I mean with isosceles? I know. The two sides of my triangle are equal, right? As a matter of fact, five each. So, and I know all three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So for right now, let me call this angle X and let me call this other angle X. For right now, I don't know how big they are, but I can figure it out because I know if I add all three, 80 plus X plus X, it's going to equal to 180. Let me fix this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's clear this out. So let's come back to what I had. <laughs> All this erased. And I had my diagonals. And I said each measurement was 5. Then I said this was 80. This was x, and this was x, and then I added everything, right? 80 plus x plus x, it's equal to 180. Now, it is equal to 180 because it's the three angles of a triangle. So we have that 80 plus 2x is equal to 180. Let me bring this 80 over, so I get that 2x is equal to 100. Divide both sides by 2, and now we're going to get that x is equal to 50. Interesting part is that these two angles are 50. But then I can say this angle is 40. Not necessarily 50. 40, because these two angles at the corner have to add up to 90. So that's what we're going to be doing with rectangles. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at one of our examples. Question number 39. Solve for the angle indicated, solve for the indicated measurement. The following is a rectangle. And I need to find out what is measurement of angle seven. That's what this thing here says, measurement of angle seven. So I need to figure out what this is. Angle seven is right here. And I am given a measurement. The measurement that I'm given is 116 degrees. That's the only measurement that I see. There's other numbers, but those are not degrees, right? That the only measurement is 116 degrees. And I can tell it is a degrees because of that little thing that looks like a zero. That's degrees. Now, based on the vertical angle theorem, remember when there's an X, opposite angles equal each other. So I'm going to say this angle right here it is 116. Looking at a triangle,
I know it is an isosceles triangle, right? That happens in rectangles. I know this is an isosceles triangle. Angle seven for right now, I don't know how big it is. I'm gonna call it X, because I don't know how big it is. Interesting part is angle one, it's also X, right? Those two angles are equal. For me to solve for X, I'm just gonna go 1 16th plus X plus X. And all this is equal to 180. Again, the three measurements of a triangle add up to 180. So that's why I know. All right, let me separate them through the equal sign. When it comes to letters, I get 2x plus 1 16th is equal to 180. The plus 1 16th, let me move it over as a minus 1 16th. So I get that 2x equals now 180 minus 116 that's 64. Let's divide both sides by 2. x is equal to 32. So there you go. Measurement of angle 7 is 32. At this point we can say measurement of angle 1 is also 32. I can find angle 2 what I will do for angle two, I will use these two angles. I know those two have to add up to 180. I can find angle four, right? I know angle one is 32. Let's just say that angle four, for this moment, let's just say it is 58. I want you to think about it. Where did that 58 come from? How did I get a 58? Think about it. Remember, angle one and angle four, those two angles combined have to add up to 90. That's where the 58 came from. So with a rectangle, given an angle, I can find many angles. So that's what we're going to be playing on our homework. The other special parallelogram that I mentioned was a rhombus. So we're going to look at a rhombus. Let me talk about rhombus first. So we know a rhombus, all four sides are equal. Not all four angles, not necessarily, just the four sides. And interesting part on the rhombus is that opposite angles are equal. And uh, But in this case, let me look at our diagonals. Remember, our diagonals are these segments inside. Now, in a rhombus, not necessarily a rectangle, but in a rhombus, the angles in the center cross a 90 degree. So any angle in the center is 90 degrees. And I'm going to say this diagonal gets cut in half, and this other diagonal gets cut in half. Notice how I mark them differently. The first diagonal, I use the one slash. The second diagonal, I use two slashes. Our diagonals are not necessarily the same length. So our angles, our angle in the center is 90. Any angle, there's four angles. So any angle in the center is going to be 90. Right, all four angles in the center are 90. Now my angles on the corners, they get cut in half. Hmm, interesting. So let's say this angle right here, I cut it into 40 and 40. Now my opposite angles are also going to be 40 and 40. Right, those angles get cut in half. It happens in a rhombus, not necessarily a rectangle. And then this one right here, let's call this 50-50. And the same thing here. So the angles get cut in half and opposite angles are equal. So we know the angles of a rhombus. We can deal with those. So let's take a look at question number 40. Here, you know, solve for the indicated measurement. The following is a rhombus. I'm solving for the measurement of angle eight. I need to know this angle. Okay. The only measurement that I see is 36 degrees. So I'm going to say that angle nine is 36 degrees, right? I can tell that's 36 degrees because the Diagonal cuts the angle in half. I know in here, this is 90 degrees, right? The center is 90 degrees. And now my focus is going to be 
in one triangle only. I can use a triangle as long as I know two of my three angles. All right, I'm solving for a measurement of angle eight. I don't know how big it is, so for right now, let me call it x. In that triangle, I know two angles. So I can solve for x. I'm just gonna go x plus 90 plus 36. I added the two angles of a tri of the that I know, plus the x. It's equal to 180. Remember, the three angles of a triangle always add up to 180. Let me separate them to the equal sign. On the left side, when it comes to letters, I just get x. Numbers-wise, 90 plus 36, that's 126. And all this is equal to 180. All right, I'm going um, to get the x by itself, so the plus 126. Let me move it over to minus 126. So I get that x is equal to 54. Right, measurement of angle eight is 54 degrees. So now you know how to work with rectangles and you know how to work with rhombus. Now, if, if you deal with the square, it's going to follow the same rules as a rectangle and a rhombus.